This next section, uh, section 1.2, talks about solving absolute value equations and absolute value inequalities. Uh, we'll actually talk about these in a later section, but let's go ahead and introduce them now. Uh, right here you can see that the first one says solving an absolute value equation. So the first one is an equation. And so what we want to talk about here is we want to make sure that you understand what these values, these letters represent. Obviously this is the absolute value symbol. A just represents any algebraic expression and K actually is any positive real number. So K must be a positive real number. So if you have an absolute value expression equal to K, then what you can do is you can actually write that as two equations. You generally will have two solutions. So you'll solve the equation A equals K. You'll also solve the equation A equals negative K. Let's look at an example here. I didn't solve it, but I want to show you how this works. So here I have the absolute value of an expression, x minus 5, is equal to 3. In order to solve this, we have to solve two equations. We have to find out what makes x minus 5 equal 3. We must also find out what makes x minus 5 equal negative 3. So we would actually have to solve those two equations. Now, let's go ahead and do an example. Suppose we have to solve this absolute value equation, absolute value of 2x minus 3 equals 5. Well, like it says up here, we, get, we have to remove the absolute value, and a lot of students forget to do that, but you remove the absolute value when you set up, set up the two equations. So we have 2x minus 3 equals negative 5, and 2x minus 3 equals 5. Once you get those two equations set up, it's pretty simple because we know what to do from here. Here, to solve for x, since we've already covered this, you can just add 3 to both sides. So you'll notice I'm skipping some steps now. We'll add 3 to both sides. So when I add 3 to negative 3, it cancels, and I just get 2x. And then when I add 3 to negative 5, I get negative 2. And then to finish this, I just divide both sides by 2, and that will give me x on the left and negative 1 on the right. So one of the answers is negative 1. Now, the other equation is 2x minus 3 equals positive 5. And so if I add 3 to both sides here, it's going to again cancel the minus 3 on the left. And then this time 5 plus 3 is actually going to give me 8. So I'm going to have 2x equals 8, then divide both sides by 2 and you get x equals 4. And then you see here I have two answers. Negative 1 and 4 are both solutions that satisfy the equation. You're, you're welcome to plug these numbers back in, but what you'll find out if you plug negative 1 in, you're going to get the absolute value of negative 5, which is of course 5. If you plug 4 in, you're going to get the absolute value of 5, which is of course 5. So that's absolute value equation. Let me go ahead and jump to number 3 so I can show you what happens when you have a number outside the absolute value because this, this tends to blow students' minds and students have trouble with this. Here I have the absolute value of 3x plus 2, but I have plus a number on the outside equal to a number. Now, what, what must be understood here is that you cannot use this property up here yet. You cannot use it until you isolate the absolute value expression. So we've got to isolate this expression to one side of the equation before we can apply the property. Well, that's easy enough. All we have to do to get rid of this 3 is just subtract 3 from the left and subtract 3, 3 from the right. And then, of course, these will cancel. See right here, they're canceling. And then 7 minus 3 will give me 4. So I'll get the absolute value expression now isolated, and it's equal to 4. Once we get to that step, then we can do or apply the absolute value property that I gave you, 3x plus 2 equals negative 4, and 3x plus 2 equals positive 4, 
and then we solve it using our properties of linear equations. Subtract 2 from both sides, I get 3x equals negative 6. Divide both sides by 3, and I get x equals negative 2. Do the same steps over here, subtract 2 from both sides, I get 3x equals 2, and divide both sides by 3, and I get x equals 2 thirds. So notice the solution is x equals negative 2 and x equals 2 thirds. So there's two solutions again. Let me emphasize that k must be greater than 0. If you were given an equation that says 3x minus 1 is equal to a negative number, then you simply say that's, that has no solution. Because the absolute value of an expression can never be negative. The absolute value just gives you the absolute uh, value of the number, which is a positive value, or it can be zero. Okay, now we're going to move on to absolute value inequalities. First one let's talk about, let's talk about what if you have the absolute value of expression less than some number? Okay, well, you can write this as a compound inequality. So we're going to remove the absolute value, and we're going to put the expression between negative the constant and positive the constant. So, again, if I wanted to set up this problem, absolute value of x minus 5 is less than 3, I would put x minus 5 between positive 3 and negative 3, because x minus 5 would have to be between those two numbers. Now, this, is, this works just as well if it's a less than or equal to. So it works the same way if it's less than or equal to. You would just use less than or equal to for these inequalities. Let's take a look at an example. Here I have the absolute value of 2x minus 3 is less than or equal to 5. So to solve that, I've got to remove the absolute value, and I'll take 2x minus 3, and I'll put it between positive 5 and negative 5. Now basically what I'm saying is that for this to be a true statement, 2x minus 3 must be greater than or equal to negative 5, and must be less than or equal to positive 5. And then we want to solve that uh, inequality. Now, the way to solve this inequality, we want to isolate the 2x in the middle. So if we want to isolate the 2x in the middle, notice we have 2x minus 3. So what I can do is I can take the 2x minus 3, and I can add 3 to itself as long as I add 3 to the term on the far right and add 3 to the term on the far left. So what's going to happen is I'm going to have negative 5 plus 3 on the far left which is negative 2. I'm going to have 5 plus 3 on the far right which is 8 and then since I added 3 to negative 3 in the middle I just have 2x. So I have 2x is between negative 2 and positive 8. Now to solve this for x, all I have to do is divide everything by positive 2. So let's divide negative 2 by positive 2, and I get negative 1. 2x divided by positive 2 gives me x, because that's what I wanted to solve for. And then 8 divided by 2 gives me 4. So that tells me that x must be greater than or equal to negative 1 and less than or equal to 4. Or this is another way to write it. This is interval notation, where you start at negative 1 and you go all the way to 4. Now really what this means is any number between negative 1 and 4 is a solution, but also negative 1 and positive 4 is also a solution. So that's how you solve the less than version. Now the greater than version is a little different. If you have the absolute value of an expression greater than k, then you have to write two inequalities. You have to say a is less than negative k, or, and that's like a union, a is greater than k. So if I had the absolute value of x minus 5 was greater than 3, I would say x minus 5 is less than negative 3, 
or x minus 5 is greater than positive 3. So what that means is, if I took an expression like this, notice this is basically the same as I had up here, just a different inequality. So here I have the absolute value of 2x minus 3 is greater than 5. So the property, since this is greater than, says that I take the expression outside of its absolute value and write it less than negative 5, or 2x minus 3 is greater than 5. And then I solve these inequalities. So if you add 3 to both sides, you're going to get negative 5 plus 3, which is, oops, uh, what's negative 5 plus 3? It's going to be negative 5 plus 3 is going to be, looks like I got these backwards. Negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2. So then you divide both sides by 2, and you get x is less than negative 1. So let's fix that here. Okay, now over here I have 2x minus 3 is greater than 5, and when I add 3 to both sides, I get 2x equals h. So then I divide both sides by 2, and I get x is greater than 4. So I've got those numbers basically backwards. So let's see, this should be negative 1 right here. And this should be 4 right here. Okay. So anyway, the answer is x is less than negative 1 and x is greater than 4. That's why I like doing these videos online because I'm able to catch these little errors. Okay, so the interval notation for everything less than negative 1 would be negative infinity to negative 1 with parentheses union, and then of course you also include everything greater than 4. Everything greater than 4 would be parentheses 4 to infinity. Now, the difference between these two inequalities is this one usually contains everything between two numbers, and of course if it has the equal to, it includes the numbers, and the greater than usually contains all the values that fall outside of two numbers. In this case, all the that fall outside of negative 1 and positive 4. But it doesn't include the numbers between negative 1 and 4. Okay, so that's how you solve absolute value equations and inequality. Going back to this thing, what I said here about k must be greater than 0. See, it wouldn't make sense to say when is the absolute value of 3x plus 5 is less than negative 5. Because, again, the absolute value can't be negative, and if it can't be negative, it can't be less than a negative number. So it would make no sense to try to use this property. It would actually give you the wrong answers if you did. And also, if you used it on the greater than case, well, when is the absolute value of something greater than a negative number? Well, always. So, so it really makes more sense to use common sense on a on these two inequalities than it would to try to use the property because the property is actually not allowed to be used. And so I probably should have written that here for all of these that k must be greater than zero otherwise these properties cannot be applied. And that ends the uh, lecture on abs solving absolute value equations and inequalities.